quite possibly the most vulnerable song about a broken relationship of the entire rock era. A gut-wrenching ballad where a man who was once a hero calls himself out as the culprit for a failed marriage and pleads with his wife, not for forgiveness, but for empathy. We pay our respects and tell the story of a Hall of Fame singer-songwriter who gets burned in a three-way script. Coming up next on Professor Rock. Hey, music junkies. Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time, especially today. You know, I want to get right to it today and remember one of our greatest singer-songwriters. You know, I remember as a, a young boy hearing If You Could Read My Mind by the late Gordon Lightfoot for the very first time. Um, I hadn't lived long enough to understand the song or really had enough life experience to relate to it, but it grabbed me in a way that it's hard to comprehend. I suppose like every other kid, I was instantly attracted to bubblegum pop or the ear candy of a catchy chorus and melody. But there was just something about Gordon Lightfoot's tune that struck me as if it were important for me to hear it, even if I couldn't truly feel its significance until many years later. It just made my young heart ache. Listening to Gordon's riveting baritone vibrato and being stung by references to ghosts in a wishing well, dark castles, chains, and fallen heroes, it was very powerful to my innocent ears. A foreshadowing, if you will, of emotions to come. Uh, they say a picture paints a thousand words, and I do believe the adage. But Gordon Lightfoot's heartbreaking ballad, If You Could Read My Mind, it evokes a thousand different feelings. As long as I am a ghost that you can't see. Gordon Meredith Lightfoot was born in Aurelia, Ontario, Canada, about 150 kilometers north of Toronto. Over 84 years, Gordon had a wealth of experience in many aspects of life. He was a choir boy, a square dancer, a banker, a singer-songwriter, a grandfather, and although he was often self-deprecating about his performances on camera, uh, life was also an actor portraying roles on film and television. I can't stop those morons shooting, but if you can talk them out of that field, I can likely keep them alive. Would you believe she's got every record I ever cut? Dad, you don't have to explain to me. It's okay. You're right. I guess you're a man yourself now, aren't you? Gordon was but a wee lad when his parents recognized his gifted singing voice, and they put him in the St. Paul's United Church Choir. As an eight-year-old, he learned to play the piano, and he performed on local radio programs. Uh, now, during his teens, Gordon taught himself to play the drums and the guitar. He spent two years at Westlake College of Music in L.A. studying uh, composition and orchestration. Then he got a part singing and square dancing in a troupe that performed on the CBC TV show Country Ho Now. Following his days as a regular on Country Hoedown, Gordon played in folk clubs in the Toronto area where artists like uh, Joni Mitchell, Ian and Sylvia, and Leonard Cohen got their start. Now, Gordon's first hit in his native Canada was the song Remember Me, I'm the One, parentheses. Uh, that climbed to number three in 1962. Now, he had another top 10 hit on the Canadian singles chart in 66 when uh, Spin Spin, uh, that peaked at number seven. All these spin, now, between 62 and 68, Gordon's career was really flourishing. He had a total of eight charted singles in his homeland during those seven years. But his star had yet to shine across the border. One of the keys to his success in the 60s was the critical support of his first wife, Britta. Britta was pragmatic and calculating. She provided more than just love and affection for Gordon. She was a much-needed sounding board, also an astute financial advisor and the mother of their two children. Gordon was constantly away from home, as you can imagine, and uh, he had countless uh, dalliances on the road. Uh, what started as a happy union between Gordon and Britta slowly deteriorated from infidelity. The mistrust and the jealousy caused by Gordon's affairs reached a breaking point in 1969 when Gordon lost his temper with Britta and he slammed his fist through a door. 
Uh, Gordon's act of rage resulted in a broken hand, which became a nasty symbol of their irreconcilable marriage. Couple split, you know, Britta took the kids and left Gordon to contemplate what had happened and really why. On one afternoon in 1969, Gordon sat alone in his thoughts inside an empty house that was up for sale in Forest Hill, a neighborhood of Toronto, when the inspiration for a song uh, instantly came to him. It started with a plea for empathy. If Britta could read my mind, what a tell my thoughts would tell. The line was the beginning of his international breakout hit, If You Could Read My Mind. If you could read my mind, love, what a tale my thoughts could tell. Sitting in the lone chair situated at a portable Quebec table that fit into the trunk of his car, Gordon Lightfoot wrote the lyrics to If You Could Read My Mind in really just a few hours. It wasn't as much an epiphany to compose a song as much as it was an opportunity to poetically bear his soul and really express everything that he was feeling about his impending divorce from Britta. Tell, just like an old time movie. In his first verse, Gordon compared the conflict swirling around in his head to an old time movie about a ghost from a wishing well. Now, Gordon held nothing back. He opened up about feeling bound to obligatory feelings that he no longer possessed, referring to being in a castle dark with chains upon his feet. And I will never be set free as long as I'm a ghost you can't see. As long as I'm a ghost you can't see. And now in verse two, Gordon put himself into Britta's mind, thinking that her life must feel like a paperback novel kind of drugstore sell. Uh, there is no fairy tale ending to this story. It was a romantic tragedy that Gordon took responsibility for. When you reach the part where the heartache comes, the hero would be me, but the heroes often fail. And you won't read that book again because the ending's just too hard to take. You often fail. And you won't read that book again. <laughs> just heart-wrenching. Now, verse 3 is where Gordon admits his philandering, inexplicably finding happiness with another woman and reaches the foregone conclusion that their marriage is in fact over. I'd walk away like a movie star who gets burned in a three-way script. Enter number two. Like a movie star who gets burned in a three-way script. A movie queen to play the scene of bringing all the good things out in me. But for now, love, let's be real. I never thought I could act this way, and I've got to say that I just don't get it. I don't know where we went wrong, but the feeling's gone, and I just can't get it back. Just jukebox poetry if there ever was. And that lyric in the third verse, but for now, love, let's be real, is incredibly succinct. The brevity, it's simple. Oh, so intensely poignant. But for now, love, let's be real. In other words, let's call it what it is. I am a heel. I was unfaithful, but we have to face the honest truth and move on with our lives. No matter how much I wish I could, I'm not capable of giving you the love that you deserve. The feelings that I had, the feelings that you wanted me to have are gone and it's just not coming back. But the feeling's gone. I just can't get it back. If you could read my mind, it was one of those songs that Gordon brought to the recording sessions uh, for his fifth studio album, and his first on Reprise Records. Uh, the LP was originally titled Sit Down, Young Stranger. It's produced by Lenny Warrenker and uh, Joe Wissard. The recording of If You Could Read My Mind was brilliantly arranged with a tender acoustic guitar line performed by Gordon himself. That captured the delicate sensitivity of the song's emotional transparency. I mean, you can hear the sadness in a gently played subtonic chord. The melancholy of the guitar section combined with Nick DeCaro's, uh, his moving string section, harmonized the music on If You Could Read My Mind as the soundtrack for the song's screenplay that Gordon compared to a romance novel or an old time movie. There is definitely cinematic drama over the entire three minutes and 48 seconds of the track's musical magnificence. It's 
It's hard to believe he got that much into less than four minutes. DeCaro, who passed away in 92, he was brought into the recording sessions for Sit Down Young Stranger by Lenny Warrenker. Uh, DeCaro was a close friend of the Warrenker family and had a stellar reputation having performed on many hit songs of the 60s. In addition to, if you can read my mind, DeCaro's prolific talent was featured on two other tracks on Sit Down Young Stranger, Poor Little Allison and Your Love's Return. Climbing your windows and walls. Seemingly perfect as the recording of If You Could Read My Mind was, the executives at Reprise were convinced that Gordon's cover of Chris Christopherson's Me and Bobby McGee was the best choice to be the lead single of Sit Down Young Stranger. I don't really understand that one, but again, there's a lot of stories like that, right? Now, Me and Bobby McGee was another hit single for Gordon in Canada. It went to number 13 on the pop chart, went all the way to number one on the Canadian country chart. But just as uh, each of his previous singles had fared, Me and Bobby McGee struggled to garner any airplay in the U.S. Consequently, uh, Gordon's new album was sitting on the shelves at American record stores, just waiting to be taken. And then something really cool happened for Gordon. I love these stories, they don't happen anymore, but a popular DJ named Emperor Smith, who was an on-air personality on the highly rated Top 40 affiliate KJR in Seattle, he checked out other tracks from Sit Down Young Stranger, and he discovered If You Could Read My Mind. You know, the Emperor, like all of us, became mesmerized by the beautiful, sophisticated album cut, and he began playing the tune on his show, instead of me and Bobby McGee. So the listener response, of course, was tremendous, and soon other stations that monitored KGR's playlist began to spin it. The national profile of the song grew quickly, with every station reporting the same overwhelming response to this song. If you could read my mind, it wasn't on the docket to be a single, actually, mostly because of its uh, unconventional song structure. But Reprise couldn't deny the amazing reaction from radio listeners all over, so the label shifted their plan and they made it the second single came out next. Now to fully capitalize on the song's surprising popularity, the title of the album was actually changed to If You Could Read My Mind. I walk away like a movie star who gets If You Could Read My Mind was a huge breakout smash in the United States for Gordon Lightfoot. It was long overdue for his artistry to be embraced in America and other parts of the world as it had been in Canada so far. The tune zoomed to number one on the Billboard AC survey, went to number five on the Billboard Hot 100, and it was the first song Lightfoot had as a single uh, to chart in the UK that peaked at number 30. If You Could Read My Mind, it was the second song to reach the top of the music charts in Gordon's home country, a feat that he would achieve eight times in the Great White North over his illustrious career. The hero would be me. The Johnny Cash, Billy Joel, Robbie Robertson, Joni Mitchell, Neil Young, and the members of Rush were ardent fans of Gordon Lightfoot, as were virtually any of his musical peers that came out of Canada. That's what you get for loving me. Bob Dylan. He was so mesmerized by Lightfoot's songwriting that he actually regarded him as a mentor that helped shape his own music as he was going through. Of course, Gordon Lightfoot, uh, he felt the same way. He returned the compliment by calling Dylan his mentor and his favorite songwriter of all time. It was Dylan who had the honor of inducting Gordon Lightfoot into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame in 1986. Been offered this award before, but he has never accepted it because uh, he wanted me to come and give it to him. So, uh, yeah. I want to thank Bob Dylan again for doing that. Again, another artist that's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ridiculous. Anyway, Gordon Lightfoot has also captivated a new generation of artists. There's Jane's Addiction and Duran Duran come to mind. In fact, Simon Lebon, lead singer of Duran Duran, stated that his composition Save a Prayer was inspired by If You Could Read My Mind. People don't know that. Uh, Duran Duran used the same woeful subtonic chord in the song's chorus. Take a look. Legends of music have lined up to do their own versions of If You Could Read My Mind. The song has been covered in more than 100 recordings, including Johnny Mathis, Glenn Campbell, Barbara Streisand, Andy Williams, Johnny Cash, Neil Young, and the list goes on and on and on. The hero About a ghost from a wishing well 
in a castle If I could read your mind, love What a tale your thoughts could tell Billy Joel just did a live in concert a few days ago. In addition to numerous cover versions, Gordon Lightfoot's iconic song and first U.S. hit was involved in a lawsuit. Actually, in 1986, Whitney Houston's single, The Greatest Love of All, was soaring up the charts. And in Lightfoot's opinion, a certain section of Whitney Houston's song plagiarized his songwriting on If You Could Read My Mind. So here are the song parts in question. First, the section of Whitney's recording. If I fail, if I succeed, at least I'm in. And now the part of Gordon's recording that he thought the song copied. Never thought I could feel this way, and I've got to say that I just don't get... In an AL.com interview in 2015, Lightfoot recounted that he initiated the lawsuit for plagiarism, but three weeks later, he actually withdrew his claim because he understood that it was affecting Whitney Houston, who had an appearance coming up at the Grammy Awards. As Gordon summarized, the suit wasn't anything to do with her. It wasn't fair of him to create controversy. The suit was really against Whitney's producer and the song's co-writer, Michael Masser. Masser later apologized for his song's similarities to If You Could Read My Mind. Although Masser was a fan of Gordon's song, he didn't intentionally borrow from it. And we should point out that Masser's wonderful composition uh, it was first recorded by the great George Benson in his album In Flight 1977. Uh, this was seven years before Whitney's recording. Benson's version was also the theme for the movie The Greatest, starring the greatest himself, uh, Muhammad Ali. The greatest love of all. Gordon Lightfoot rarely performed duets, but he did make an exception in 1984 when he sang If You Could Read My Mind with Marilyn McCoo on Solid Gold. Now, in pop culture, If You Could Read My Mind was synced in TV episodes of the following Midnight Mass, Cold Case, Family Guy, Doom Patrol, Mr. Robot, The Blacklist, Gremlins 2, The New Batch in 1990, 54 and 98, Wonderland in 2003, We Are Marshall in 2006, The Tell in 2018, and Licorice Pizza just recently. So when I became an adult, a bit wiser, more experienced, and uh, more worldly, I guess, I was reacquainted with If You Could Read My Mind. Suddenly, I came to realize why I was so transfixed by the song as a child. Even though I was too young to understand it then, the emotional meaning blasted me right square in the heart. The power lies in the sheer vulnerability of this song. What I heard then, and what I still hear is a man deep in self-reflection with complete humility, accountability, regret, frustration, and in an ultimate act of transparency, admitting his failure as a lover and as a husband. As the plot of the story thickened, the hero turned into the villain. I felt empathy that I didn't know that I had. I mean, not to exonerate the man, but to at least understand what he was going through. How can you explain how love comes and goes? It's not something that's protected by the laws of nature or controlled by the mores of society. Never knew I could feel this way. If you could read my mind, it's both candid and liberating. As disruptive as it was, the narrator, the fallen hero, chose to be honest with his wife and honest with himself. In that song, Gordon Lightfoot exemplified a style of songwriting that is sadly a fading art form. When Gordon died on May 1st, 2023, I thought about all the inspired songs that he authored, many of which I've listened to hundreds of times, thousands of times. My parents, both my mom and dad, played Gordon's music all the time growing up. Here at Professor of Rock, we presented features in the past on Sundown and a wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald and as we were working on this piece, spotlighting, if you could read my mind, I got to tell you, it was amazing to rediscover some of the less celebrated songs that he wrote, like uh, Beautiful. With all my mind, you're beautiful tonight. You know, the last time I saw her. Time I saw her Gordon was a troubadour, if there ever was one. 
As a lyricist, he was boldly profound. As a storyteller, he was acutely perceptive. Gordon Lightfoot is the father of six and the grandfather of five. His first daughter, Ingrid, along with her older brother, Fred, uh, lived through the divorce of their parents, the very experience that inspired, if you could read my mind. Uh, when Ingrid was still a young girl, she took exception to part of her father's ballad about her parents dissolving marriage and exhorted Gordon to change a particular stanza in the song that was directed to her mother. Now, the original line in the song was, uh, I'm just trying to understand the feelings that you lack. That you lack. Ingrid incredulously asked her father, don't you lack any feelings, daddy? She felt her father was putting the entire onus of the breakup on her mother. Gordon was speechless. Ingrid then requested the line, I'm just trying to understand the feelings that you lack, uh, be revised to, I'm just trying to understand the feelings that we lack. Now, Gordon, he took his daughter's words to heart. In his professional view, it was an example of how writing songs conceived by personal real-life stories can sometimes lack emotional distance and clarity to make the kind of lyrical improvements that Ingrid suggested. Um, at Ingrid's behest, Gordon switched the lyric, and he sang the altar version whenever he performed, if you could read my mind, live in concert. I gotta tell you, I have to give uh, my heartfelt thank you to a national treasure, Gordon Lightfoot. Thank you for writing music with so much soul, so much depth, empathy, but most of all, integrity. <laughs>